does the pre did he make a compelling case that the situation meets the threshold to invoke the Emergencies Act? No, I think he did. And the words in the act are pretty clear. I mean, something has to endanger the life, the health and safety of Canadians in such a way as to exceed the capacity of a province to deal with them. And if you take as an example, banking is exclusively a federal matter. So no province could cut off funding in and of itself. It needs federal legislation to do that. So I think it's pretty clear that there have been instances where the provinces, whatever they have done, have not had the necessary constitutional authority uh, to make a difference. I think similarly on the, on the insurance front and on a couple of other fronts, but by and large, I think both Canadians generally, and if you read the statute carefully, the standard has been met. It's particularly, I think, comforting or should be comforting that with the exception of the financial measures, um, everything is on offer. As the Prime Minister made very clear, you don't have to compel a towing company to help if you're in Alberta or somewhere else. You don't have to use the RCMP to impose, to uh, execute provincial law. So I think by and large, the, the way this has been structured has been pretty effective in dealing with not forcing polices of lo local jurisdiction or provinces to be upset about what the federal government is doing. But I think in the end, it boils down to the fact that the primary level of government to ensure that peace, order, and good government is present in Canada is the federal government. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Having said this, and you may want to come back to this later on when we're talking, in the end, somebody somewhere is going to have to authorize executive action, I think, to move people away from the blockade, from the blockages. Um, there's a general view, I think, that possibly Ottawa should have done more, Ottawa Police sure, but it should have done more. And I hope we do have a public inquiry into this, the post-mortem, to see what's going on. But to answer your question directly, I think the case has been made. The threshold of the Emergencies Act has been met, and consultations have taken place. Parliamentary review will now clutch in. We now have to see to what extent, with the exception of the financial measures, provinces and municipalities will make new use of these new powers. Okay, uh, Dick Fadens, please stand by. Uh, we now have the Minister of Emergency Preparedness, Bill Blair. He's going to join us. He was at the press conference. Dick Fadden, uh, hang on, Dick. I'm going to just stay with you. Now, Dick Fadden, because Bill Blair is just making his way, we've got a bit of a microphone issue. Dick, you just mentioned, and I, wanna, I want people to appreciate what the Emergency Act is, and we have a board. I'm reading from it. Does this meet the threshold? There are three levels here that the Justice Minister David Lametti outlined. Does it seriously endanger the lives, health, safety of Canadians? And is the proportion to ex exceed the capacity or authority of the provinces? Does it seriously threaten the ability of the Canadian government to preserve sovereignty, security, and territorial integrity? And does it, it cannot be um, effectively dealt with under any other law? A lot of folks, and that's the threshold of the act that I'm showing right here. Dick Fadden, very quickly, um, many people say the RCMP, the OPP, and the municipal police, in this case the Ottawa police, already had the, the laws. They just weren't enforcing them. They didn't have the capacity. You didn't need any emergency act to enforce the existing law. What you needed was the willpower. So, so why did they need to invoke this? I think that's going to be the question of the day. And I, I think there's an argument to be made that the police in some instances could have done more. But there's a tradition in Canada that when you have demonstrations of this sort, you do absolutely everything that you can to avoid violence. And I think that is something that the various police forces have done. Having said that, I think there is now a demonstrably clear case that something needs to be done. Now, it would have been easy for the Prime Minister. You don't even need to invoke the Emergencies Act to involve the military. The National Defence Act provides for that. If you want to avoid that sort of thing, I think you have to provide them with some protection. Cut off the funding. Ensure that essential services can be provided. So I think there's a bit of a balancing act here to be found. I happen to be, as a private citizen, of the view that the Ottawa police should have been able to do more. In particular, I think they might have been more proactive early in the demonstrations, in the, do in the right. blockades, to stop people from coming in. They chose not to do that. And as time develops, as people become more and more settled in the demonstration, it is increasingly difficult to move them. 
So you want to try and find right. any device yeah. you possibly can, short of, you know, getting people in riot gear, and the Ottawa police have a riot squad, as do the OPP, as do the Mounties. Short of doing that, you want to do everything to force them to reconsider what their position and to go away. And I think some of the measures here, okay. in particular those with essential services and on the financial side, will help the police to do that. Uh, Dick Fadden, hang on, I just got to pause you again. You're the, the former um, national security advisor to two prime ministers and the former uh, head of CSIS. Uh, he's going to stay with us throughout our special edition of Power Play.